TPE Network. Fun yet informative podcasts. Hello and welcome to the Mandalorian Fan Podcast. And we're going to be covering the Bad Batch. So I'm Hank. And I'm Alex. And we're your hosts. And we're going to have a lot of fun here today uh, talking about Episode 1, Aftermath, and Episode 2, Cut and Run. Shall we get right to it, Alex? As Mike, Big Mike, is tends to say, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. What I thought was really cool in the opener was that Clone Wars logo burning away into the Bad Batch. I thought that was pretty sweet. Yeah, and then well, I thought it was a cool transition from uh, Clone Wars to Bad Batch simply because we had the opening... Uh, kind of like the opening uh, uh, prelude, I guess we could call it, where they tell what's going on and what to expect. And I thought that was pretty cool because, you know, anybody who's ever watched Clone Wars, that's exactly what they do before each episode of Clone Wars. And that voiceover guy is the same person, I believe. Oh, yeah. So I, was, I was pretty stoked about that. So on Calor, General Bill Bilaba, needs reinforcements and her padawan is name is caleb and he arrives with the uh clone force 99 which is the bad batch <laughs> and I, I was loving this uh you i know, thought this i thought it was i thought it was pretty cool they were trying to i think i think caleb is trying to raise a little keen in there so that's uh <laughs> <laughs> he looked like him didn't he but, but uh, Freddie Prince Jr. did the voice too, so I thought it was a you know a pretty cool. Uh, can, I don't I don't want to call it a cameo because he had more screen time than being just a mere cameo, but he was on there for for quite a bit. And I don't know if anyone's read the Marvel series Kanan. It kind of tells how he went from, uh, you know, went from you know Order sixty six to uh, to uh, to to Kanan, right? So uh so it was kind of slightly different than the comics, but it was the same idea. So okay. I, I I I think most of us uh fans of Rebels really you know kind of geeked out for that part. Uh, yes. And the only thing I thought found weird about their entrance was they never the people that they're reinforcing don't ever help while they're taking out all the other ones. I thought that was kind of silly. Yeah, I don't know if the animation department ran out of their movement budget, but I don't know. <laughs> They're just holding tight while they five people <laughs> fight all these other, you know, people that have uh, got them pinned down. I was just like, oh, uh, you can right. come out and help at any time. So we meet our crew, Wrecker, Hunter, Echo, Tech, and Crosshair. And they say, if Obi-Wan stops Grievous, the war will be over. Love that tie-in. I I really like that. Um, and you know, for the most no. part, most part that was true. But yet, uh, oh, uh, the Emperor kind of had a <laughs> had a sneaky thing by the order of uh, Order sixty six that's going to come into play. And we're not talking a Big Mac either with a side of fries. So when they hear that Order sixty six and uh, General Balaba gets killed. The Bad Batch <laughs> don't know Order 66 except for Crosshair. And I was pretty confident his time with the team was going to be short-lived just by the way he was acting early on. Yeah, again, that's going to be something that's I think is going to be coming into play in the future episodes. So it was just kind of hinted at uh, this episode uh, specifically. Um, so I know a lot of people were asking, well, why didn't these inhibitors work for the Bad Batch? And, uh, the, I don't want to say excuse, but the reasoning was that their mutation was so, uh, severe, I guess I could say uh, it was so severe that it didn't, that it affected the inhibitors. And I think, I think Crosshair out of all of them um, was affected the least, but he okay. was still affected. Okay. 
So sort of on board, but kind of being pulled in yeah. both directions. Yeah. So out of all of them, that's, you know, the inhibitor really worked for him, not the others, but him, it really worked for her. And yeah. Okay. Caleb is able to take down crosshair or crosshair and then he runs and Hunter's trying to calm Caleb down, but he jumps all the way on the other side of that chasm, which was really cool. I didn't think he was going to make it to be honest with you. I thought he'd fall and still survive, but uh, not. Oh, make come it. on. He's a Jedi. <laughs> he's, he's a, a Padawan. Padawan. They could make it. Yeah. That's right. And then, I, don't, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know about you, but, uh, I, I look at Hunter and I, I think of Rambo. He's got the yes. band red bandana going on. And I don't know if that's intentional or not, but that's the impression I get. So uh, D Bradley Baker, who makes up 90% of the cast for bad batch. Uh, I, I really like what he, what he did with, you know, each of the characters has a distinct sound, but yep. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm waiting for, uh, Hunter to say, yo, Adrian. <laughs> and Hunter then lies to Crosshair. So you knew that situation was going to uh, boil over because we have the Bad Batch heading to Camino and Crosshair is so suspicious of Hunter the entire time. They just keep alluding to it. And I had a theory because I have not read the Bad Batch comics or anything like that. So when this started transpiring, Based on casting news, I had a hunch, but we'll get to that later. And that that's funny how, you know, sometimes we can figure things out just by casting in and of itself. But um, I don't, one thing I did before I started watching Bad Batch, I went over and rewatched the first four episodes of the final season of, of Clone Wars. And, you know, Crosshair really wasn't, he was he was a team player. Then all of a sudden, he's like questioning everything. But again, you know that's that's the inhibitor doing its Act, job, acting up. Uh, on the base, the batch sees a Jedi body being carried away. I love that effect where they have the lightsaber fall off, and then, and those other troopers are like, "What are you looking at?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So so the so the the fan community is is saying that that's shock T. But according to the lightsaber, it didn't quite resemble her lightsaber. So, again, oh. that's oh. we're not sure. But, you know, kind of, you know, leave it to your imagination as to who you think that could be. Maybe like it's that. Anakin. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's half of him. Um, <laughs> that's the good half. That's the good half. We get information on the clones programming. I love how uh, they were like, oh, there's chips. And, and he's like, tech is like, how did you guys think this worked? <laughs> that was so, so funny. But, yeah, uh, tech was like, yeah, it's it's obvious as, you know, you mean you didn't know? <laughs> they didn't You're get asked the to call somebody. <laughs> oh, we didn't get the, we didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Palp Palpatine delivers his speech to the troopers. And then we see that small child up on the platform that we'll later find out is Omega. Uh, she's like a medical assistant. And so, I'll be honest. So wait, Wayne Henderson is going to love this because this is our star child. <laughs> so we have a star child for the series, isn't it? Okay, is sorry. Sorry to interrupt you. I, I had to add that in there. Wayne, this is for you. A <laughs> star child. <laughs> oh, that is amazing. Oh, he'll love this now. Now he'll be on board for this one. Oh, great. Uh, so Admiral Tarkin talks to the Camino Prime Minister about not needing clones anymore because they have an agreement in place. But he, you know, the Empire's looking to break that agreement because they're like, well, we're not really going to need them because we've won. Which was an ingenious way they went about winning, if you ask me. I think one thing that we're going to find in this series, we're going to find how they're going to transition out of using clones and more into using humans, I guess, as uh, stormtroopers. Yep. Wrecker and Tech get into it, and we find out that they're all going to be evaluated. That's why Tarkin is there. 
So Omega sits and has a meal with them. And then some clones come by talking smack and Omega throws food at them. And the Bad Batch starts this big brawl. But Echo, he got his lights put out with that food tray. I felt so bad for him on that one. Yeah. It must be the the metal of the tray has something to do with uh, that Lobot like uh, ear piece of his. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and then that little goofy AZ robot with the super long numbers behind AZ. Yeah, I was like, oh my gosh, he's going to be obnoxious. Hopefully, they don't go back to him. But <laughs> you never know. Now that um, car- now that that droid kind of remind me of the droid that was in the Star Tours ride. Um, it looked very similar, so I don't know if anyone want you know pipe in and through the fan mail to pipe in about that. But that's what it reminded me of. I don't know if it's the exact same droid or not, but okay. who knows? Awesome, that's a good insight. Um, he, he says that they are genetically defective clones. <laughs> the prime minister has summoned them, but it wasn't the prime minister. It's Tarkin. Tarkin wants to see them in a battle simulation, but he on the fly switches to live rounds, which was uh, a horrible idea. And they say, let's use the old Felucia battle plan. And we all know how that ended up. No, I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but but uh, I love that simple wiring harness on the back of that droid. Yeah, that, that is just easily accessible. They're just like, oh, here, we'll just do this. And then they're able to uh, uh, have Crosshair shoot a knife out of the air. I was like, OK, wow, that's some serious shooting here. I guess we're going on the more fantasy side of things with this whole series. <laughs> Tarkin wants to know about Clone Force 99. And he already knows that Caleb escaped. And I was like, oh, crap. So he's going to send them on a mission to battle some separatists in the other Underon sector. But he doesn't tell them all the information, which is his, you know, that's the way he does things. And they're kind of, you know, the Bad Batch, they're kind of assuming that they're going to be fighting droids. Yes. They think they're going to take out a whole bunker of droids and stuff. So when we get there, um, well, Omega kind of tips them off and tells Hunter, Tarkin's got it in for you guys. Don't trust them and all that stuff, which was a good little uh, heads up. But when we get to that camp and it's all elderly and kids, I was like, what kind of series are we watching here? I was kind of a little worried about this. Yeah, Crosshair, I think, was, was you know, didn't have a problem, I think, with executing them if, you know, given that order. No. But and that, but, that the, but the others, especially Hunter, you know, Hunter's like, no, I don't think so. We're not going to. Yeah, do we're not doing this. Uh, interesting enough, they get flanked by some soldiers that are already there you know, part of this uh, rebellion, so to speak. And we meet Saw Gerrera. Were you okay with his representation on the series? I wasn't sure what to expect since we, the way we seen him in the movie and now the way we see him on the cartoon. Okay. So Saw Gerrera originally appeared in, in the Clone Wars series. And he was, uh, he had a, oh, it's been a while. So bear with me. Um, he had a sibling, I think it was a twin sibling. And, and so the twin sibling, spoiler alert, didn't, didn't make, make it out alive out of that episode. And Saw Guerrero appears, you know, extremely young, full head of hair. And then I thought, you know, his appearance here was an awesome transition because we're starting to see that saw Guerrera that we're going to see in both uh rebels and of course uh rogue one okay but and- i want to know who was who was the voice of saw Guerrera. i'm gonna assume it was that original uh voice from the original clone wars but i didn't look to see that to look that up yet, and I probably will after the episode, which I should have done before this episode, but... No worries. He talks about a new civil war and them fighting back, and he's gonna let those clones make their own choice, which I... I, 
you know, I get that the show is about them and stuff, but from his perspective, I was like, mm, I'll probably wait to give them their weapons. I'll be like, you're waiting until I'm flying away. Hey, your weapons are over there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to trust all of them. Not all of them. But there was a probe droid there the whole time watching everything. So that's going to come back to bite them. Yep. And, and that's kind of like an homage to, you know, Empire Strikes Back and... And, uh, Hank, the only thing I'm going to say, it's a good thing I wasn't wearing that shirt today because that would have been a fashion faux pas because I had that exact same shirt. <laughs> so I'm at most Eisley. We could have me, been. I, I got to show everybody. Up, oh, go the other way. There we go. Most Eisley. We could have been, been the twins. <laughs> <laughs> One of us ain't making it out of this recap alive. <laughs> 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 that'd be horrible yeah. but, but uh um so when we get to to this point and crosshair you know he's continuing to show us what he's gonna do is he's uh alluding to it and then they figure out that omega is actually the fifth clone because echo is a reg technically a modified okay. reg and i was like what the heck I was not expecting this series to have like a star child. I was, you know, when they first, when she first appeared, I kind of, you know, had a suspicion that she was, that she was a clone. Okay. Cause she kind of had some of the same physical appearance. In, in, in fact, if you look hard enough, it almost looks like, uh, uh, the, uh, the actor that played, uh, Boba Fett in, in, uh, attack of the clones. Ah, okay. I guess I got to look a little harder. I was like, maybe this is uh, Obi Wan's little love child. <laughs> 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 but Omega and Az they snoop, and that little robot gets stunned by a trooper. Which I, sorry, I clapped. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> He'll stop talking now. And then and, the batch gets surrounded. Right and. And truth be told, we don't see that droid for, you know, the rest of the episode, nor do we see it in the next episode. So I think your <laughs> prayers have been answered, Hank. Yay. Uh, no, soft clap, golf clap. <laughs> in the brig. Hey, they complete their mission. They find Omega. She's in there with them. <laughs> so it was kind of funny how that all worked out. And uh, Crosshair really goes off on Hunter. And then he mysteriously just gets taken away. And they are going to intensify the chip in his head to make him even more loyal because Tarkin's kind of impressed that he is staying loyal this whole time. Right. Which is really disturbing. Tech figures out a way to get them out where he has record punch that wall and and they're able to pull back some of that paneling so Omega can get through and pull the lever. Uh, things go a little sideways, but they still are able to get out. But Crosshair is now full-blown believer in the Empire. And what, do you get a new outfit once you join up? I guess, yep. And not only did they amp up his programming, but he got uh, he got a set of new threads to go with it wardrobe change <laughs> and, and maybe we can start calling him darth crosshair <laughs> 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 but uh the doors are being held open were you at all surprised that they were going to get a little helping hand here i did it's well they had to escape somehow so i guess that's how they did it but you know they were happens to to Ben, was it the prime minister or was it his assistant? That, his assistant. I think it was his assistant, yeah. But mm. the prime minister knew about it. Yep. And I was like, oh, crap. And they're kind of playing both sides in the middle, it feels like. Yeah. But they're getting kind of hosed over a little bit, too. So that's the way I took it. Is yeah. Maybe th they want to make sure there's a little balance in the universe, so to speak. Yeah, because I think the Empire is looking to end uh, the, the deal with, with the clones. And yep. so Camino would be, you know, not useless be anymore. Yeah. yeah, useless. And then uh, oh, Omega shooting the gun out of Crosshair's hand. What did you think? BS or no? That's the new Crosshair. Call her <laughs> Crosshair Jr. <laughs> Dead shot. 
<laughs> well, we could use it. It's owned by Marvel, so or which is owned by Disney, so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's epic. Or wait a minute. Is Deadshot the DC one, or which one is the DC one? Nope. Oh, I'm thinking Deadpool. Yeah, Deadshot is the DC one. You are yeah. correct. I stand we cross, corrected. We cross streams. <laughs> As we frequently do. Yes, we do. <laughs> uh, finally, Wrecker gets Lula back, his little stuffed animal. <laughs> Which is so cute anyway, right? And then Omega asks if they can get help from their friends. And Hunter says, a plot, of course, for J-19. We know a guy. At first, I thought they were going to say, we know someone. And they were going to pick up uh, Fennec Shan or something. Because oh, if, that'd you're, be cool. if you're down a shooter, you need a shooter, right? Right. So that's what I thought this whole thing was going, you know, why it was going on. I was like, you don't need two bullseye shooters, but maybe it's not going to work out that way. I'm just speculating. I don't know. Anyway. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but uh, that that was really cool. And that was the end of the episode. What would you dole out the rating for the, that first hour? I, I thought it was a good episode. It uh, was a great start to the series. Um, I would, I would give it between an eight or a nine at least because, you know, kept my interest, couldn't wait for the next one. So I'll, I'll say a nine. It wasn't perfect, but few episodes are. No, no. And I thought it was really well done. Um, not quite a nine for me. I'll give it an eight, but I thought it was well done nonetheless. Uh, Cut and Run was a really short episode, so the recap should not take us long on that. So we're going to dive right into episode two. Hunter and Echo contemplate what they're going to do with Omega. Uh, she's never been outside, apparently, because she's like, what is this? Is dirt. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And you you kind of see it uh, through her through her eyes, and she's touching the ground, and she's just kind of in awe, right? And so, you know, she's been on she's been on Camino her whole life. So, it's all been metal walls and plastic and she not used to dirt. So, kind of good counterpoint to Anakin Skywalker who hates sand. So, <laughs> uh, they're looking for someone when they set off a tripwire and we get to meet Cut and Sue. So Cut looks like one of them, but with like yeah. longer hair or something. So kind of again, again, this is another character from Clone Wars. So we meet him. I think it was season two, if if I remember correctly. So and there's an episode where Rex goes and uh, and uh, talks to him and whatnot. And and so, and with that being said, you know, he makes mention of, of Rex being there, you know, not too long ago. So I think we're going to be coming upon Rex here pretty quick. And then we meet their kids. So that kind of solves that debate on yep. clones and having kids. <laughs> <laughs> and Cut wants to know what purpose Omega has. Like, why did... They make Omega that in that fashion. And I started to ponder that, but I don't have a good idea right now. Not yet. No, because well, you know, a female, right? And that's that, that was kind of kind of kind of odd. And yeah. she has seems like she has this intuition, not Jedi like intuition, but it's kind of similar. So, yeah. She knows a lot and she's pretty effective at what she does. In town, Hunter and Cut notice the Empire is that they are seizing ships. They have the whole chain code system going on now. And then there's that voiceover with that hologram that says, now you're going to have to exchange your money for Imperial credits and stuff. I was like, oh, man, this is this is yep. where it starts going sideways here for the whole all the whole series and, and the universe, the Star Wars universe. Yep. Omega, yep. Omega we, goes we, outside. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I was going to say, um, we, we see, uh, I, I want to call it Snaggletooth. I don't know what the name of that uh, uh, race of alien is, but, you know, for us uh, original fans who had the action figure, they call it Snaggletooth. So that was cool seeing that uh, 
alien species in, in action or freaking out, as it were. <laughs> and which one was that? Was that in town? Yeah. Or outside the f- Okay. No, what, what was no, the that, animal that, outside the fence? What was that one? Do you know? Oh, um, that's the very same one we would have seen on Attack of the Clones. And I think in Attack of the Clones, it was a mar- much larger one. So this one was rel- relatively smaller. So it's kind of like a... Oh, kind of like a cat like okay. It was species, creepy, but it was kind of creepy to me. I remember seeing the name for it, but again, it's, it's kind of forgettable, so indeed I did forget. So <laughs> when Omega goes outside the fence and and gets uh, confronted by that, why did they tell her to stand still when it was so far away? She she might have been able to run and get through that the hole of the fence. I don't know. I I kind of thought the same thing, but evidently those things are quick, and maybe it could have been sprung so quickly that it would have got her before she would have gotten to the fence. So evidently this is something that they, you know, have experience at, and they've seen them before and know what they can do. And then Sue's on the roof. She's able to shoot. And I was thinking to myself, uh-oh, maybe something's going to happen to Cut in town, and then she'll have to join them and take over being their marksman. So right. I, I, I was just making speculation at this moment. But we find out about the chain code database. Like they're going to have an entire database of everybody. And their plan is to have the clones seize their own ship so they can get inside. But they don't tell anybody this whole plan. And Hunter's like, yeah, Omega's on the ship with you guys. I, I was like, oh, my gosh. That, that to me was kind of goofy because... I don't think that tech would do something like that. I think he's smarter than that. Yeah. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Something was not quite right. Once in the impound, Echo finds the disc. Omega took the disc <laughs> in a, an attempt to help them out, uh, but literally causing more trouble. And then when Wrecker hits not R2-D2, I was like, oh, that is so funny because... It, you know, you just think of that robot design and you're like, oh, it kind of looks like an R2-D2 type. <laughs> he yep. smashed the head out of that thing. I was like, ooh, maybe not. <laughs> and maybe you got a redesign on that one. And then he takes those three troopers and just blast their heads together. I wanted to do that at work sometimes. You're like, hey, come here, guys. Let's have a little talk. <laughs> <laughs> Bong. <laughs> so, going back to the R2 unit, I think we could call that R2 unit R2 Karen because I think he was gonna he was gonna narc on the on on the other one. So uh, they're he right was, here. Okay, he like, Karen. He was like, you better call somebody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Omega gets them the diss. But there's an extra one. There's a fifth one. And they didn't tell it, her that it's for her. And I was like, oh, that is so heartbreaking. I was a little sad, not going to lie. And yeah. they're able to get through. Uh, cut Sue and their kids. And it, Omega it appeared to be going on there. But then on the dock, the Bad Batch have to du- duke it out with all those troopers. And when they had the magnetic locks, it reminded me of those boots they put on your car in like New York yeah. and stuff. <laughs> and when yep. Wrecker tears off those magnets, I'm like, how strong is this monster? He's kind of creepy though with that helmet off. I'm like, put that helmet back on. Yeah, you kind of <laughs> wonder what the story is behind all the scarring on the side of his face. Ugh. And that's when Omega rejoins the group. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, as Cut is almost spotted. Hey, you kind of look like we need reinforcements on the dock. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's <laughs> perfect, convenient writing. You got to love that. Yeah. <laughs> so our team is able to fly away from there and uh, get away. And then lastly, Hunter and Omega talk. And Omega wants to stay with the team. And he says, okay, you can stay with the team. I thought that was a terrible decision on his part because now you're going to have to really watch out for this kid. So, yeah, so you now you're going to have to be the parent. Mm-hmm. So you better make that uh, make that deal and keep your promises. That was a, a yeah. really short episode, which was yeah, fine. But I, the first I, one was I, long. 
yeah, first one was long, and this I most of the episodes are going to be like at this, this length. So. Oh, sure. And I, I wasn't certain how many episodes were going for this first season. Um, I'm going to assume it's oh 16. Okay, because yeah. I think Clone Wars was 16 as well. I was kind of surprised, to be honest with you. I thought it was going to be a little shorter and they were going to be longer, but it looks like they're going to be real short. Right. Um, Well, what do you think about this episode? What kind of score you want to give this one? Um, Again, we have uh, some, we got some, uh, you know, returning characters we've met before. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, I like the scene where it's at the spaceport and we can, we probably could pick out probably species from all three uh trilogy eras um i so i like how they incorporate that um um again it's it was it was shorter so um it wasn't bad but i'll i'll give it a proficient 8 this time okay and I was one down again. I was uh, down at a seven. I, I liked it, but it was just something about it being so short that I just didn't feel as invested as in the first episode. Right. So I hope they do a good job. Well, they've laid the foundation. So going forward, I think they're going to do a good job of saying, here are the stakes. Here's the mission. Go. And, and right. we, like Clone Wars did. Yeah, and, I uh, think what yeah. I think what we're gonna see though in the you know next sixteen episodes, yeah, we're gonna have some transition episodes coming up. I'm you know spoiler alert, I guess. Um, and I know for sure that uh, um, we'll we'll be again returning to to some familiar characters. So I'm kind of hoping though that uh, we're we'll have a Vader appearance. Oh man, please let that happen. Oh, I hope so. I would love that. Fantastic. Um, we had to record on short notice because I didn't know the series was approaching us this fast, to be honest with you. So, um, (laughs) uh, the feedback that we get will just go in, I'll put it at the end of the episode because I know there's some coming. Um, but they, you know, I wasn't able to tell people when we're going to do it. But, Alex, do you think Saturdays are going to stick? I think recording? Saturdays, yeah, Saturdays should be fine. If uh, okay. like the morning, early afternoon part's good, it's okay. be good for me. So if you out there are watching the series and you get to watch it Friday or Saturday morning, go ahead, send us in your feedback Saturday morning or right before noon, and we would love to get it from you. I'll add it into the show. And you can do that by heading to tpenetwork.com slash feedback so you can hit us up on voicemail uh you can send us a little text message and you can even attach your own voice recording and send it that way as well all those are available at tpenetwork.com slash feedback but alex anything else before we roll out of here uh nope nope uh, you know tune in next week and we'll be here and i think you and i are going to be on thursday if memory serves me correctly so. yes oh thank you so much for reminding me of that uh every thursday i live stream hank's happy hour so this coming thursday it's going to be me and alex we're going to talk Woo-hoo! about ghost hunting kind of ghost experiences and stuff it's going to be a Heck of um, a lot of fun. 6 p.m. Boy, Eastern time. Boy, do I have stories. Yes, we both have some good ones. Yeah. So we're going to light light it up. I think it's going to be one of the best Thursdays that I've done so far. I so don't know. That, last last week was pretty cool. I, that was fun. I, I enjoyed last week. I always enjoy heckling you guys on there. So it's... <laughs> I, I happened to have been out for dinner when you guys were on there. And so, you know, my, my wife and daughter were just chatting up a storm and me being left out of the conversation. I just like, okay, <laughs> I got some buddies so, on right now that I can interact right. with. So. Yep. So every Thursday, 6 PM Eastern time, I am live streaming for an hour or so mm-hmm. and uh, just rotating people on in and out and having a blast doing it. All right. For Alex, I'm Hank. Until the next time, we're signing off. See ya. TPE Network. There ain't nothing else like it.